In this video, I'll do some experimentation with vacuum forming PETG, high impact polystyrene, and Kydex. Then I'll paint and finish the resulting parts to make some interesting sort of dragon claw eye patch designs. This time I'm using regular Sculpey to create a vacuum forming buck and modeling it over my foam mannequin head made in a previous video. So I can work the sculpture around the anatomy of the face. I'm doing all the detail with a leather working tool that has a good shape for making scales. And I'm building out the base around the talons to avoid undercuts which would prevent the mold from releasing. Once the design is complete, the clay gets transferred to an oven safe dish and baked according to the instructions on the box. Based on the results from the vacuum formed axe, I'm drilling small holes in any areas where the plastic may have trouble sucking down into the details. Since this is such a small part, I modified the vacuum former by placing a sheet of corrugated plastic over most of the holes and adding some adhesive foam weather stripping around the edge of the center cutout. I built a frame from paint stir sticks and stapled the sheets of plastic to the frame for heating and transfer. The smaller size is much easier to work with and gets good detail. The clear 0.02 inch PETG is more finicky with the temperature, so I kept overheating it by mistake and getting too much webbing. But after a couple of tries, I got a pull where that part that I needed came out clean. This 0.03 inch styrene is more forgiving than PETG, stretches beautifully, and picks up a lot of detail on the first try super easy. The challenging part is removing the mold since it does undercut slightly in some areas. By trimming away all of the excess, I'm able to flex and wiggle the part free. Kydex is a completely different experience since it doesn't stretch like the other plastic. It pulls away from the frame as it heats, so this rickety wooden frame and staples are not ideal. Incredibly, the part came out decently, even though the edges weren't sealed. A sturdier frame would probably make for a crisper result with the Kydex, but the current setup captured enough details to work for this round of testing. I'm trimming away the material between the claws so you can see out through the fingers and so they look more three-dimensional, like they could be reaching out through the skin around the eye socket. The Kydex is a tad thicker and resistant to cutting, so I'm using the Dremel to grind away most of the excess before cleaning up the edges with the knife. For the clear PETG, I wanted to try dyeing it, but I didn't have any dye on hand, so I'm trying Sharpie and alcohol, which works for synthetic wigs, so I thought it might work for this type of plastic. I let it sit for a few hours, then dunked in the claw, put the lid on, and left it to marinate for the rest of the day. In the meantime, I gave the styrene claw a light sanding, and now I'm adding some bright green and yellow acrylic paints. To bring out the texture, I'm using a damp towel to polish away the paint from the high points on the fingers and the palm. It does need a coat of sealer at this stage so that additional layers won't pull up the base coat. While that's drying, I'm working on the Kydex claw, starting with a light sanding to help adhesion and then layering on a dark metallic silver. Once that dries, I'm adding on washes of umber, burnt orange, and black. It's starting to look a little drab, so I'm brightening things up with a light silver on the nails and palm, then giving it all a coat of sealer to lock in those layers. Back to the green claw while that one dries, I'm shading the fingers with dark blue and black and also washing the blue lightly over some of the bright white areas to smooth the transition and add some variety. I found this awesome iridescent green acrylic which works great brushed lightly over the base coat to liven up the light green areas. Finally, this gets a little dirt under the nails and some weathering around the edges. With the Kydex claw, something wasn't looking quite right, so I added some iridescent green over the bright silver and then some highlights to the tips of the fingers where there might be some smooth skin instead of scales. It looks rough at this stage, but it needs to dry before I can blend it better. I'm adding the final layers of seal around the green claw, about three coats, letting it dry in between. I'm using acrylic paints and acrylic sealer because these are thin plastics that can bend so spray paint would likely crack over time since it dries brittle, but the acrylics will bend with the piece without cracking. And I also sealed the brown cloth to set that white paint before going back and blending it in better. To make these wearable, I'm cutting out some lightweight leather and gluing it in place with high temp hot glue. This will cushion the edges so they don't dig in around the eye and it also reinforces the plastic so it's more durable. I've cut straps from the same brown leather which will be attached with Chicago screws. I'm melting holes into the plastic with the round tip of a soldering iron, cutting through the leather and widening the holes until the screw fits snugly. The strap threads on from the back and gets held securely once the screw is tightened. The leather on this one gets weathered along the edges with diluted black paint to complete the look. For the green claw, I chose black leather to finish the edges and followed the same process of gluing and neatly trimming. I'm using a rotary cutter to cut the straps, which makes it easier to get a clean straight line. And the straps are about 18 inches, so it's a good length for tying it on. Because this leather is so thin, I find that small scissors are the easiest way to make the hole for the Chicago screw after punching in a starter hole. 
This one seemed like it needed a more defined border, so I traced the edge, scanned in the pattern, and traced out a 3D model, which is printed in flexible filament. The backing is very thin, so it's still somewhat translucent, which is a nice contrast for the opaque leather. I carefully hot glued this in place and used the soldering iron to melt down the inner edges for a good bond with the leather, then screwed the straps back in place. I also painted the back of the claw to match the leather. This one I'm not gonna bother finishing because it didn't really come out as dyed as I had hoped. The Sharpie did kind of dye it a little bit. You can see it does have a nice icy blue tone, so that could be useful for something, but I really needed to get a proper dye to make it work um, as like a darker tone that I was going for. Then I just tried painting parts of it with some of the translucent kind of iridescent paint, and again, it doesn't look that great. It looks better when you put it over something like with these guys. Uh, another thing that I didn't end up using were these little dragon scales that I printed out of the flexible filament. I was thinking of using this as a border because in the flex you can have it contour to the curves, then you can just like layer them. Then when you start to put on a few rows, it does look kind of cool. But for this particular thing, it was just a little bit too busy. So it might be something that could be useful in future. It's kind of cool in the green filament too. The size modification method for the vacuum former worked great. So I can better match the project size to the frame and bed size if it's something that doesn't need the full 24 inches. And this also wastes less material. Hopefully you enjoyed following along with this experiment. If so, leave me a comment or a thumbs up. Since the last video with the miniature Black Rider gauntlet, I finished 3D modeling the full van brace and a buckle, and I might make a few changes to the hinge, but soon I'll have an update video to demo the finished kit at full size using proper rivets. I'm also in the process of patterning the Ring Wraith Sabaton foot armor to go with the gauntlets, and I'm working on getting some brand new designs to experiment with, so stay tuned for updates on that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.